Hi everyone, it's Professor Primerton. In this video we're going to finish up our discussion on more on slope. So we're going to talk about how to interpret slope as a rate of change and also how to find the function's average rate of change over a closed interval. So how do you interpret slope as a rate of change? Well, remember that we define slope to be the ratio of the vertical change, which is the change in the y values, divided by the change in the x values, which was the horizontal change. Well, slope can actually be interpreted in terms of real world applications as a rate of change. How much does one variable change as compared to the other variable changes? No, so in the next example, we're going to look at how can slope be interpreted as a rate of change in an applied situation. So when you're calculating slope with applied problems, it's extremely important to keep track of your units because the slope is representing a real world rate of change. How much does one variable change? Well, that's in terms of units as well. And also compared to how much does the other variable change? Well, it's also in terms of those units. So here's how you can determine the units for an average rate of change. You keep track of the units of the numerator or the dependent variable, and you keep track of the units for the independent variable or the denominator. So here's a very common example of a rate of change, miles per hour. So you have the word per, that denotes a rate of change or a ratio. So you have miles per hour or MPH. The dependent variable is representing distance, which is in miles, whereas the independent variable is representing time, which is in hours. So you'll have the rate of change or average rate of change. Most commonly people call it ARC. It's the change in the dependent variable or the change in the Y values. In this case would be the change in the distance divided by the change in the independent variable, which will be the change in the time, which would be hours. Or you can just calculate this as the slope formula. If you have two points that you can identify in terms of the word problem, you can have the difference between the y values, y2 minus y1, divided by the difference between the x values, x2 minus x1, which of course is rise divided by run. All right, let's go back to the example we talked about at the beginning of the last video. We're going to have two ordered pairs identified on each line segment, and these line segments, if you remember, was representing the number of United States adults aged 18 or older that were living alone by women and men. So we're going to focus on the green line segment representing men, or this dark blue or green line. Express the slope, correct two decimal places, and then, more importantly, describe what this means in practical terms. So let's keep track of the units first. Well, the units of the average rate of change will be the change in the dependent variable divided by the change in the independent variable units. So notice that the dependent variable is the number of men, United States men, living alone in millions. So that's the units of the dependent variable or the numerator. The units of the independent variable is on the horizontal axis and it's representing years. So the units of the average rate of change will be millions of men living alone per, because we're talking about a rate of change, year. Okay, so let's calculate the slope first. Find two points that are identified on the line. Well, they're representing 1990, and there were 9 million men living alone. And then 2008, there were 14.7 million men living alone. So those are our two points, our two data points. X1, Y1 is 1990, 9.0. X2, Y2 can be 2008, 14.7. And keep in mind from the last video, it does not matter which point you call X1, Y1, or X2, Y2. So now we can calculate average rate of change, or ARC by using the slope formula. So slope y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, you will get 14.7, subtract 9.0 in the numerator. And then the denominator, you'll have 2008, subtract 1990. So that tells us the numerator is 5.7. So in other words, there were 5.7 million more men living alone between 1990 and 2008. And the denominator is 18 when you subtract the years, that's an 18 year span. So when you calculate this, it wants us to round the two decimal places, you'll get 0 0.32. Now the units, we've already talked about this, it's million men living alone per year. So it's 0.32 million men living alone per year. All right, so let's talk about the average rate of change of a function next. 
So in the previous example, we talked about finding the average rate of change of a graph that was a straight line. But we already know that functions, graphs, may not always be straight lines. So we're going to talk about what's called average rate of change of a function in general now. If the function's graph is not a straight line, then we can calculate what's called average rate of change between any two points on the graph by finding the slope of a line containing those two points. And that's called the secant line. So let's look at this graph. This is going to give us a good idea of how to find the average rate of change by finding the slope of the secant line. So we're going to look at a particular person's height as they grow older. So the person's height is the dependent variable. So the height is measured in inches and it's a function of their age. So age is talking about the independent variable, which is in years. So the two points they're identifying in the graph are 13 comma 57, so 13 years old, 57 inches tall, and then 18 years old, 76 inches tall. Notice that the graph between these two points is not exactly a straight line. So the person's height is growing extremely fast between 13 and 14 years old, a little bit less increase in height between 14 and 15, and then 15, 16, 16, 17, and 17, 18. They're still increasing, but not nearly as fast as 13 to 14 or 14 to 15 years old. You can calculate the average rate of change for how fast does this person grow on average each year by calculating the slope of a secant line. So the secant line is taking these two points on the graph, 13 years old and 18 years old, connecting them with a straight line, and that's called the secant line. And now you can calculate the slope of that secant line. So let's do that. So we're going to call 13 years old and 57 inches tall. That will be our x1, y1. And x2, y2 will be 18 years old and 76 inches tall. Well, it's exactly like we were doing before, except instead of the graph being a straight line, we are making a straight line, which is the secant line, and calculating its slope. So the average rate of change, or ARC, is the slope between the two points. You calculate the change in the height, 76 minus 57. Well, the person grew 19 inches over that time, and the change in the time, or the change in the age, was 18 years old, subtract 13 years old, or just five years. So this person grew 19 inches in just five years. But a more commonly asked question is, on average, how fast was the person growing each year? Well, 19 divided by five is 3.8. Well, th what does 3.8 mean? Well, that means 3.8 inches per year is the average rate of change in the person's growth. So keep in mind the units. The numerator was talking about inches, the height, and the denominator is talking about years. So this person is growing 3.8 inches per year between 13 and 18 years old. Notice that this answer, 3.8, it depends on the two points we chose. So if we chose any other two years, our answer will be different. So this average rate of change, or average growth rate, is specific for 13 and 18 years old. Okay, so let's talk about the average rate of change in general now, just the formal definition. You have a function y equals f of x. You want to calculate the average rate of change, or slope, of a secant line. So you take any two points on the graph of the function, and you calculate the secant line, or you draw the secant line first, and you calculate its slope between the two points. Well, here's the situation for a function in general. You have two points, x1, comma, f of x1. f of x1 is just saying what is the output or what is the y value when you plug in x1 into the function. So this is really x1, y1. And then you have this other point, x2, f of x2, which is really x2, y2. So these are two points on the graph depi depicted in the graph below. So notice that the graph is not a straight line. The graph f of x is a curve. To be able to find out the average rate of change of the function starting at x1 and ending at x2, you calculate the slope of the secant line. So you take this graph, identify the two points, and you draw a line between them, and that's called the secant line. And then you find the slope of the secant line, which is called average rate of change. So ARC f of x2, which is really y2, subtract f of x1, which is y1, 
divided by x2 minus x1. So notice that this is just the slope formula. So in example 6, we're going to find the average rate of change for a function f of x equals x squared, and we know that is a quadratic function, so its graph is a parabola, not a straight line, for the given values of x1 and x2. You're given x1, and you're given x2, and you know the function. Find the average rate of change, or the slope, between the two points on the graph. So that's what we're going to do in part 1. x1 is equal to 0, and x2 is equal to 1. This is given in the problem. Well, notice in the average rate of change formula, you need to identify what the y values are, because in these problems, you will not be given the entire point. You need to find them. So the first step, find the y values, y1 and y2. So to get y1, you substitute 0 into the function. 0 squared would be 0. So that is the point 0 comma 0. Now do the same thing to find y2. y2 is when you plug in x2 into the function. So when you plug in x2, you get f of 1 is equal to 1 squared, which is 1. So that is the point 1 comma 1. So now it's just like finding the slope between the two points, 0 comma 0 and 1 comma 1. The numerator would be 1 minus 0, the denominator would be 1 minus 0, and you'll find out the average rate of change or the slope is equal to 1. Okay, let's try another problem, number 2. This time x1 is 1 and x sub 2 is 2. So this time we're changing the values of x1 and x2, we should expect a different average rate of change because the graph is not a straight line, it's a curve. So again, find the y values. y1 is what you get when you plug in x1. So f of 1, you get 1 squared, which is 1. And then y2 is what you get when you plug in x2. So x2 is 2. So f of 2 is 2 squared, which is, gives you 4. So now you can find the slope. It's y2, 4, minus y1, 1. So that gives you a difference of 3 in the y values and the x values were 2 minus 1, or a change of 1. So the average rate of change this time, or slope of the secant line, is 3. Okay, so it kind of gets lost in what we've actually have found, so we're going to talk about the graphs next. The graph on the far left, this was our first problem in the previous example. We were trying to find what was the average rate of change, or slope of the secant line, between x1 equals 0 and x2 is equal to 1 and we found out the average rate of change was 1. Well, that means if you take this graph, which was the parabola, y equals x squared, and you take these two points, 0 comma 0 and 1 comma 1, and you draw a line between those two points, this line is called the secant line, and we found out the slope of that secant line is 1 between these two points. The graph in the middle was the second problem that we've done. We took the points 1 comma 1 and 2 comma 4 on the graph. So notice if you draw a line between these two points, this line is much steeper than it was before. It's because we've changed the two points on the parabola. And we calculate the average rate of change by drawing the secant line again. And the slope of that secant line was 3. And you can notice that this was a steeper graph, so it should have a greater slope. And on the other hand, the graph on the far right would be if you took the points x1 is negative 2, and x2 is 0. You calculate the y values, so you get negative 2 in parentheses squared gives you 4, and 0 squared gives you 0. So identify the points first, draw the line between them, that's the secant line, and notice that this secant line is falling from left to right, so it should have a negative slope. So if you do this problem on your own, you should come up with a slope between these two points is negative 2. Okay, a couple more things left in this video we need to talk about. There is a connection between the average rate change of a function and the difference quotient that we've talked about in the course earlier. So here's the, the connection. If you take a function y equals f of x, where x1 is equal to x, and your x2 is x plus h, and you plug them into the average rate change formula, f of x2 minus f of x1 divided by x2 minus x1, well, x2, you get f of x plus h minus f of x1 gives you f of x. So the numerator is the, so notice that the numerator is the numerator of the difference quotient. And then x2 minus x1 gives you x plus h minus x. And the x's will simplify by canceling out. And all you're left in the denominator is an h. 
what you come up with for average rate of change is the difference quotient. So what does that mean? Well, keep in mind, average rate of change of a function is the slope of the secant line. So if you take a graph, I just drew in an arbitrary graph that has a couple curves. If I take one point as x1, y1, and that's your x, comma f of x, and your other point is x2, y2, x plus h, comma f of x plus h, so you plug in your x value, you get your y value. If I calculate the slope of this secant line, or average rate of change, I get the difference quotient. So in other words, the difference quotient is the slope of the secant line between these two points. So if you take calculus, you'll see a lot more about the difference quotient and average rate of change. But this is as much as we're going to talk about it in college algebra. All right, so last example in this video, we're going to look at a graph and find what is the function's average rate of change on a closed interval. So when a person receives an injection into a muscle, the concentration of the drug in the body is measured in milligrams per 100 milliliters, so they're giving us the units of the dependent variable, is a function of the time elapsed after the injection, which is measured in hours. So that's the units of the independent variable. The graph on the next page shows the function where x represents the number of hours after the injection and the value y equals f of x, or the y value, is the concentration of the drug in the bloodstream at time x. Okay, so this is the graph that's given us the concentration of the drug in the person's bloodstream. So you have the drug concentration in the blood, milligrams per 100 milliliters, that's the units of the dependent variable. And then you have the time, which is in hours, after the injection. So zero hours, right when the injection was given, and up to about 12 hours or so. The question is asking, find the average rate of change, or the ARC, in the drug's concentration between three and seven hours after the drug was administered to the patient. So notice on the graph that they identified three hours and the, the concentration and seven hours and the concentration for us. So we are calculating the slope of the secant line. So imagine that you're drawing a line between these two points. That's called the secant line. And you want to find the slope of that line. So well, you can just use a slope formula. The slope formula, y2 minus y1, so that's the change in the concentration of the drug in the bloodstream. So that would be 0.02, subtract 0.05. So notice on this graph, between these two concentrations, the concentration is decreasing. It's falling. So you should get a negative answer, negative 0.03. So the concentration fell 0 0.03 milligrams per 100 milliliters. And then change in the x values is the change in the time after the injection. So 7 hours, x2, minus x1 is 3 hours, so that was a 4-hour gap in the time. And when you divide these two, you get negative 0.0075. Now keep track of the units. The units of the numerator were milligrams per 100 milliliters, so milligrams per 100 milliliters. The fraction bar becomes a per. And then the 4 was representing the horizontal axis units, which were hours, so per hour. So in other words, between 3 and 7 hours, the drug concentration fell, on average, 0.0075 milligrams per 100 milliliters each hour. So this finishes up our discussion on average rate of change and slope of the secant line. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework, in terms of average rate of change, please let me know that as well, and I'll see you at the next video when we talk about domain and composition of functions.